Welcome to Electron Online, and in this series of videos, we're going to tackle a new kind of mathematics. It's called linear programming, and we're going to first do the graphical solution. So typically, that limits ourselves to just two variables, the x and y variable, because if you have multiple variables, you can no longer do a graphical solution in two dimensions. And so these are sometimes also called optimization problems, where you're trying to optimize something. There's something being manufactured, you have limited resources, limited people, limited hours, limited uh, material, uh, you need to transport things and so forth, so you're going to try to find the most optimal way of doing all that by trying to uh, maximize the profit or minimize the cost. So here we have a more basic example than that. So instead of setting up a word problem and going through all the details, we're going to do that later in some additional examples. We just want to go and tackle the methodology first. To do these types of problems, you have to go through nine very definitive steps. And so I want to show you what those nine very definitive steps are with a basic example to already have the equations worked out so we don't have to develop the equations. We'll learn how to do that later. So the first step is we're going to define the variables. Typically, there's two variables, sometimes more. But in a graphical solution, there's typically only two variables. And so when I define them, let, we're going to write let x equal something, let y equal something. Usually, that's a quantity of something. Let x equal the quantity of the first product we're developing. Let y be the quantity of the second uh, object that we're developing. So you want to define them as such. The second step is you want to determine the objective of the problem. And typically the objective is that you're either going to maximize or minimize something. You're going to maximize the profit or minimize the cost. The third thing you want to do is determine the objective function. You want to write in an equation format how you're going to calculate the profit or how you're going to calculate the cost or whatever it is that you might be optimizing. So here we're going to use the variable z, whatever z represents, and z the objective function is usually written in terms of the variables that you define here. So let x and y be the number of something. And so the either the profit or the cost or whatever is going to be equal to 2 times x plus 3 times y in this, this, in this example. It could be anything, but we'll just make up any old objective function. The, first, the fourth thing you want to do is determine the constraints. Usually there's some constraints, some limit on your problem. You only have so many hours available. You only have so much material available. You only have so many trucks available. Or there may only be a maximum that you're able to store somewhere. Some constraints that need to be taken into account that will have an effect on the variables x and y. Here, the two constraints that we have is that the sum of x and y must be equal to or less than 5 and that 2 times x plus 3 times y must be less than or equal to 12. Again, this is just a basic example. And obviously, we also have to constrain x and y that they must be at least 0. There's no such thing as negative quantities of anything, so therefore, we always know that the variables must be at least equal to 0. The next thing you do is you want to find the boundaries of your graphical constraints. So what's going to happen is when we start working out this problem, we're going to get a region on the xy plane in the first quadrant, it's the positive quadrant, where we can operate in. So we want to find the boundaries of that region. To find the boundaries of that region, we take the inequalities and turn them into equations. So we take the x plus y less than or equal to 5 and, turn, and make it an x plus y equal to 5. And instead of writing 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12, we write it as 2x plus 3y equal to 12. You simply take your inequalities and write equal signs instead of inequality signs. And then you want to write those equations into the y equals mx plus b format. So let me write it like this, so y equals mx plus b, and that way we can go and grab those two equations. Those then become the boundaries of the region of interest, and so the equations represent the boundaries of that region. And so here we have two equations which we're going to have to graph. So then the next step, step number six, is graphing the boundaries, graphing the, the bounded region. So let's do that, so step number six, we're going to graph the boundaries which are the equations, or represented by the equations, which came out of the inequality, so boundaries. Okay, so here we have our x, y axis. Y axis, there's our x axis, so the first line we're going to graph is y equals minus x plus 5. 5 is the intercept, that's where it crosses the y axis, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there we go. And the slope is minus 1, so that means we drop 5, we go 5 over, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the first line is going to be this line right here. There you go. And so sometimes I mark 
my equation. So this is equation number one, and I'll go ahead and mark this equation as equation number one so I can associate them like that. The second thing I want to do is, of, of course, grab the second equation, and my intercept is plus four right there. My slope is only minus two over three, so the slope is not as steep. So let's see here, where will it cross the x-axis? So when y is equal to zero, so let me show you, when y is equal to zero, I get zero is equal to minus two-thirds uh, x plus four, and I multiply both sides by three, so I get zero is equal to minus two x plus 12, which means two x equals 12, which means x equals six. So when x is equal to six, that's where we'll cross the axis. So we go from this point to that point. So you see my second line is this line right there. That's my second line. So you can see that they cross right there. So let me go ahead and, and erase that so I, because I'm going to need the space. Now the question is, what is the region of interest on my graph? Well, to do that, I go back to my inequalities and I see which side of each line, that's the boundary, of this inequality will which side of that will satisfy the inequality and which side will not so let's pick a test point and the test point I like to pick is of course 0 0 when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 which is of course on this side of line number 1 will that satisfy the inequality is 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 5 and so our next step will then be find the regions so we do that by picking a test point. And the test point that you typically want to pick a test point, and the test point that you typically want to pick would be uh, x equals 0, y equals 0, the origin. And so we know that the origin falls on this side of line number 1. And if I put 0 plus 0 there, is that less than or equal to 5? And the answer is yes. My test point satisfies inequality. That means this whole region on this side of number 1 satisfies it. The other side does not. So I want to get rid of the other side, and I'm going to cross that out. That's not part of my solution. So I get rid of that side that leaves this side available. I'm doing the same with the second line here. The second inequality, if I plug in 0 and 0, is that less than or equal to 12? And the answer again is yes. So this region on this side of line number 2 satisfies the inequality. That means I can get rid of everything else on the other side. So this side of line number 2 is not part of the solution. So I get rid of that. In addition to that, I want x to be greater or equal to 0. So x must be on this side of the y-axis, so this region is therefore not included and y must be greater or equal to zero so this region down here is not included which means that the point or the region of interest that I'm looking for is this region right here and let me use some color on that there we go there we go this is the region of interest this is the region where I need to operate in in order to find the proper solution and I'm bounded by these lines the next step is I want to find all the critical points. Wherever two lines cross, like right here, right there, right there, and right there, those are what we call critical points. And yes, I have four of them. I have this point right there, I have this point right there, I have this point right there, and this point right there. So the next step, step number eight, we need to find the critical points. And that is where all the lines cross. Now, some of them are easy to find, like, of course, this one right here is point number 0, 0. That's an easy point. This point right here is x equals 0, y equals 4. So that's 0, 4. That's an easy point. This point down here, that's another easy point. That's the point 5, 0. So three of the four points are really easy to pick out just by having graphed this. The only point left is this one right here. And that one I can find by solving those two equations simultaneously. So, here I have y equals minus x plus 5 and y equals minus 2 thirds x plus 4. So if I solve them simultaneously, I set them equal to each other. When I do that, I get minus x plus 5 equals minus 2 thirds x plus 4. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the fraction. So when I multiply the left side by 3 and I multiply the right side by 3, I get minus 3x plus 15 is equal to minus 2x plus 12. I move all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other side, so I get minus 3x plus 2x. Remember when I cross equal sign, the sign changes. I get 12 minus 15, 
when I bring the 15 from the left side to the right side. So this becomes minus x equals minus 3 or x equals 3. So the x coordinate of this point is equal to 3. And so what is the y coordinate? Well, we plug it back in one of these two equations. When I plug in a 3 there, I get y equals minus 3 plus 5. Minus 3 plus 5 is plus 2. That means y equals 2. And so the coordinate point there, or the point of interest, that critical point is 3, 2. So now I have four critical points. The last thing I want to do is I want to evaluate the objective function. Remember, I had to either maximize or minimize. Well, in this case, I was supposed to maximize. I don't know if it was profit because it's just a general example. But whenever we have the constraints less than, that means we want to be as big as possible. What is the largest thing I can get? In this case, what is the maximum profit we're trying to obtain? So in this case, I'm trying to find the maximum objective function. So the last step is evaluate the objective function by plugging in the xy values of the four critical points here into the objective function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate z when x equals 0 and y equals 0. So we pick the origin right there. That's one of the four points. And of course, when we do that, so there's my objective function. And so this will then be equal to 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0, which is 0. That's obviously not a maximum value. That's so very unlikely that that's the right point to choose. Okay, let's pick the second point. Let's pick 0, 4. So we're going to evaluate the objective function when x equals 0 and y equals 4. So using the objective function, that's 2 times 0, because x is 0, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. So obviously 12 is bigger than 0. So out of these two points, this would be the best answer. Okay, let's try the third point. We're going to evaluate the, uh, the objective function when x equals 5 and y equals 0. So that's equal to 2 times 5 plus 3 times 0, which is 10. And that's not as good as this point right there. So this is definitely a better point to operate in is that if I want to maximize the objective function. Finally, our fourth point right there, we can say that the objective function, when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2, that is equal to 2 times 3 plus 3 times 2, which is equal to 6, plus 6, which is equal to uh, 12. And again, this offers me a solution, and this offers me a solution because at those two points, I have the maximum possible value that I can have for the objective. So, using a different color, I can say that I can either operate at this point right there or can operate at this point right there. And if those two points on that line give me the maximum value for the objective function, then operating anywhere along this line will do the same thing. So the ultimate solution is, if I want to maximize the objective, where z is equal to 2x plus 3y, I want to choose it in such a way that I have this relationship right here. So anywhere from zero values for x and four values of y, two, three values for x, and two values for y will give me the largest possible value. And that's how we do that.